Just when a caterpillar thinks that its world has ended, it becomes a butterfly. And with a flap of its wings, that butterfly causes a catastrophe a world away. Think to yourself, are you that butterfly? Welcome back, Desert Bluffs! Over the past few weeks, months, years, I'm not really all that sure, to be honest. Well, a lot has changed here in Desert Bluffs. We lost friends, family, neighbors, memories, our sense of self, the company that employed basically everyone who has ever worked here, our budding friendship with the neighboring town of Nightvale. We also lost my Strex pet. If anyone has seen a limited edition Strex pet with the optional juicer attachment, serial number 155355, could you just let me know? He answers to Muffy. As many of you are by now aware, another thing we have lost is our former host, Kevin. He has recently left Desert Bluffs for destinations unknown. To Kevin, we all wish you happy travels and success wherever your new life has taken you. With Kevin gone, it took a while to get our broadcasts back on the air. It was partially due to a lack of a radio host, but mostly it was due to widespread power outages. Previously, everything in town ran on solar panels powered by the unending light of the smiling god. Now there is only one sun, and it isn't there half the time. Just as a note, if there was ever a sign that this whole one sun deal might not be the best, it's the fact that it keeps setting every day. Just make up your mind and stay put. However, I was able to scrounge up some unused solar panels and repair them enough to be usable again. I'm using them to power the station for the time being, but they're not the most efficient, so I won't have enough power to broadcast every day. I'll make sure to raise a green flag above the station on days where I plan to broadcast. So keep an eye on the flags above the station for news and alerts. Remember. Green flag means broadcast day. Red flag means dust storm. Purple flag means poison gas. Blue flag means clear weather. And black flag means run. And a yellow flag means keep smiling. Only quitters stop smiling and nobody likes a quitter. And believe me, if you think now is the time to leave Desert Bluffs, nobody will like you either. These are dark times, yes, but soon they will be bright times. We will light up the nights, devoid of sunlight due to that fair weather friend of a sun we've been stuck with, with our smiles, our hearts, and the 5,000 watt searchlights we've repurposed from the abandoned StrexCorp daycare center. Honestly, we really have lost a lot, but now is the time to rebuild. We have a blank canvas, a clean slate upon which to write our own destinies. It's time to roll up your sleeves, lace up your boots, strap on that smile, and get to work. And there is a lot of work to get done, but I'm sure we can do it. With perseverance, hard work, and community involvement, I'm sure that Desert Bluffs will rise again from this rubble. Triumphant. Smiling. I am going to do my best to stick to the format all of you out there are familiar with from here on out, with community announcements, words from sponsors, climate reports, etc. I think a little bit of stability and normality will do wonders for our town. So let's get to it. Some community announcements. In the absence of Strex Corp's security forces, affectionately nicknamed the Strex Cops by Desert Bluff citizens, Desert Bluff's interim government has announced the creation and empowerment of the all-volunteer Neighborhood Watch program. The Neighborhood Watch will be comprised of community-minded citizens who have an interest in watching over Desert Bluffs to ensure the safety of all residents, and will be acting as the sole approved group of crime fighters. Shortly after the announcement of their creation, the Desert Bluffs Neighborhood Watch issued a Crime Watch warning for the Lights District. A group of dangerous criminals appear to be targeting individuals in that area, and the Neighborhood Watch is en route. 
If you are in the Lights District or in the immediate vicinity, it is advised that you relax silently with your doors and windows securely closed and locked. You should continue relaxing until the crime watch warning has been cleared. Of note, my radio station is located in the Lights District, but due to the nature of my job, I will be relaxing not silently. More on this story as it develops. The Desert Bluffs Daily Paper, formerly the Desert Bluffs Strex Gazette, has announced that they are back in business. And by that, we mean that we have erected a cork board next to the massive pit in the center of town. You know, the pit. The one you can't see the bottom of, even with high wattage searchlights. And when you throw a rock in it, you can never hear it hit the bottom. That's the one! A recent editorial submitted to the Desert Bluffs Daily Paper has sparked some heated discussions amongst some residents. A concerned resident posted a letter decrying the culling of wild coyotes as they passed through our town, calling it unnecessary and... Okay, seriously, we all know it was Francis Smith who wrote the letter. Typewritten or not, his bleeding heart routine is unmistakable. Residents are understandably upset about the posted letter. The coyotes that sometimes pass through town have been known to carry off children and the elderly and attack even healthy adults. While I can understand this anonymous writer's concerns, I personally believe that allowing coyotes to pass through our town and carry off members of our community is just not a great thing to be doing. True, there was a time, not so long ago, where roving packs of coyotes served a very important purpose in our town, culling the weak and helping to keep pension costs down. But given the recent decline in population here in Desert Bluffs, we simply cannot afford to lose any more citizens. Plus, Ruth Winkler has set up a nice business selling coyote meat and artisan coyote blankets. Considering the number of retirees we've let the coyotes have over the years, it's about time they start giving back anyhow. Perhaps, once our population has recovered from recent events, Desert Bluffs can, as a community, return to the idea of maybe not killing every coyote that passes through town. But until then, we should stick with what works. This has been Community Announcements. Some of you listening may be wondering a bit about who you're listening to. I really did mean to introduce myself at the start of the broadcast, but I guess I let it get away from me. My name is Terry. I was an intern under Kevin for a while, I think. Anyway, while I was an intern, I never really got to work in the broadcast booth. I mean, sure, I tried. I was always on time, ate plenty of vegetables, I did the work, and I did my time. But when we lined up every week, and Kevin walked down our line with his portable fluoroscope to examine our internal organs, he always passed me over. I asked him about it once, and he said that I just wasn't a good fit. Or rather, that my organs weren't a good fit. Either way, I'm in the broadcast booth now, and I have not a whole lot of experience. Luckily for me, my fellow intern Paul also stayed at the station to help me out. He's in the sound booth right now, making sure everything runs smoothly. Say hi, Paul! Also, Paul doesn't talk. But that's just fine, as radio interns were both fluent in several non-spoken languages, as is customary. Honestly, though, I never imagined myself in the host chair. I was quite content with my lot in life, rushing around to get tea for the staff, making copies of various forms, then holding an auction where the staff was allowed to bid on the forms to get the ones they needed to fill out in order to properly document their work. That was the most exciting part of the work week for me, because we rarely had enough of this one specific form, and the penalties for failing to submit it were quite severe. But really, I never wanted to be a radio host. I was happy to be an intern. But, well, it was either me or Paul, and Paul doesn't talk. So I must take up this mantle of radio broadcasting, at least until Kevin gets back. Which will be soon. Very soon. Kevin would never abandon us. This is just a test. A test of faith. Kevin will return. Everything will return to normal, 
and those who doubted will rue the day that they ever did so. So, please, bear with me. I have a lot to learn about radio hosting. Hostessing? Either way, I'm glad that I'm learning here in my beloved town, broadcasting to my friends and neighbors. We're all learning new things, and that is good, as long as it's approved. But that's why you should listen to my broadcasts. They're all smiling approved, and it's all stuff you need to know. Speaking of stuff you need to know, an update on the Crime Watch warning reported earlier in this broadcast. The Neighborhood Watch has narrowed the area still under Crime Watch warning to just the radio station and the sidewalk surrounding it. That is probably not good. I am looking out the window of my recording booth and I see the Neighborhood Watch is beginning to form a perimeter around the building. Goodness. They seem quite intent on locating and watching whoever it is that is inside of this perimeter. There will be many eyes upon that particular person or group of people. Many staring, piercing eyes. Eyes that gaze intently, deeply. Eyes that follow closely. Please be careful out there, guys! So, while we wait for the watch to apprehend those dangerous criminals, why don't we take a look at the community calendar? Monday is Desert Bluff's bi-monthly medication disposal day. If you have any medications that you can bear to part with, just drop them off in the big bucket by City Hall and we'll take care of it at the end of the day. We especially need sedatives. The Neighborhood Watch will be there to ensure that your offerings are sufficient, so we suggest that you bring the good stuff. You know, that stuff you've been saving. The stuff you keep in that hollowed out Betamax tape? We know you've been holding out. Don't lie to us. Shh. Just shush. Why do you always have to make this so difficult? You'll be there? Good. On Tuesday, the Scavengers Guild is holding a recruitment drive in a uh, town. It looks like in town. Everywhere. Expect to see the press gangs out in full force on Tuesday. Anyone who does not have a guild tattoo by then is fair game. They have issued the following statement regarding their recruitment drive. Many of our most essential resources are obtained through scavenging. Due to the recent discovery of an active minefield to the southwest of town, we are in sore need of more members to help locate and collect resources from the sand wastes. Applicants should be agile, with good eyesight and stamina. Please come dressed in lightweight, loose-fitting clothes. Again, the recruitment drive will be held this upcoming Tuesday. Wednesday is probably nothing to worry about, right? Thursday doesn't exist this week. Sorry to those of you looking forward to it, but we had to make budget cuts somewhere. Next week isn't looking so good either. There's been talk of setting up a collection to help Thursday out, but that'd practically be communism. Friday evening, there will be a Movies in the Park event hosted by the Desert Bluffs Historical Society. And by park, I mean a large patch of desert with fewer rocks than the rest of the desert. You know, the spot next to that big rock off exit 32? And by movie, I mean someone will hold their hands up in front of a big light and make shadow puppets onto a large rock, while behind the rock, some hidden volunteers will shout lines from that timeless love story, Alien vs. Predator. Afterwards, there will be a staring contest, and the winner will receive... There's just sort of a greenish-yellow grease stain here when describing the grand prize, so I'm really not sure. On Saturday, you're going to be working extra hard to make up for time lost on Thursday. On Sunday, we will all be immortalized. And that's all it says. Immortalized. This has been the Community Calendar. And now, a word from our sponsor. In the interest of transparency, I feel like I should let you all know that this sponsor is Intern Paul's mom, and her sponsorship consists of a heavily damaged inspirational poster of a kitten reading, Hang in there! 
If anyone is interested in a more substantial sponsorship, feel free to stop by the station pretty much any time as I have begun living here. Food or parts for the radio station or more efficient solar panels would all be acceptable sponsorships. Anyway, a word from Paul's mom. You are alive. Feel the itch of blood pulsing through your capillaries. Feel your dying skin cells slough from your body. Did you know that every cell in your body dies and is replaced every seven years? When a mop handle is broken, you replace it. When the mop head is worn out, you replace it. You are a composite of many parts, many living systems working in perfect synchronization. You are imperfect and off balance. Look around you. You are in desert bluffs. It too is shedding skin. It too is being renewed. We are a composite of many parts, but without harmony. Breathe deep. Is it still the original mop when you replace all the parts? Are you still the original when you replace all your parts? Yes! You are because there is a part of you that transcends the parts. You are greater than the whole. Desert Bluffs, the best part of all of us. Another update on the dangerous criminal situation. I'm hearing what sounds like a scuffle or struggle outside my studio. Paul has apparently gained access to a few of the security cameras in the building, and he is relaying to me that there are a few individuals looting, uh, I mean, browsing through the radio station. And not one of them appears to be sporting a scavenger's guild tattoo, so they have clearly not gotten approval for this. The neighborhood watch has moved in to watch them now. They are watching the criminals with 2x4s that have nails driven through them. They are getting watched really hard! They are watching one of the browsers spurt water all over the walls outside of my booth. Oh gosh, one of the criminals has just had his happy smiling face on his happy smiling head watched clean off his shoulders. You know, seeing as this is sort of my radio station, at least until Kevin gets back, I really should go outside and see if the watch needs any help. In the meantime, why don't you listen to today's climate report? Well, you left home the other night I won't see you for a couple days but I still leave on all the lights And all your stuff is still in place Where you left it Every man 
memory of you well, all night long since you've been gone is running through my head and I say oh my god could this be is love finally tripping me I'm falling The dreams of you were my escape, I'm falling Ooh. Whoa. Oh, can't seem to get you off my mind Oh, no matter how I try and try Oh, every time I blink my eyes I'm falling about two minutes ago, the Crime Watch warning has been officially cleared by the Neighborhood Watch. And good news! When I went out there, I managed to snag some perfectly serviceable parts for the station. I would have gotten more, but the Neighborhood Watch had picked up the scent of blood, and as everyone knows, never get in the way of a shiver of watchmen when they are in a watching frenzy. But, you can expect Desert Bluffs to be even safer now that the Watch has met some new friends. True, the Watch has a thousand yard stare and kept muttering between bites and sobs, I'm sorry, I'm just so hungry, and this isn't me, I'm just watching, I'm just watching. Which got me thinking. When I started this broadcast, I was uncertain. I was filled with doubts about being able to do my part for my community. These are some big shoes to fill, at least until Kevin gets back. But then the community came together, here at the radio station. True, they came together to loot, uh, I mean, browse the radio station, and the watchmen came to watch them. But in the end, those browsers turned it around. Instead of taking from their community, they gave back to it. They gave the rest of us hope. They gave us a common purpose. They gave me some nice parts for my studio. They helped unite us by giving us a goal to achieve, even if that goal might have been dismemberment. Aren't things looking up already? Yes. Yes, this... this is going to work out well. Everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. This will be fine. This is fine. Everything will be fine. Well, it looks like I'm about to run out of power. So I will leave you all with a closing thought. Always, always remember to eat others the way you want to be eaten. I'll talk to you soon, Desert Bluffs. Keep smiling. Welcome Back, Desert Bluffs is based upon characters and locations from the podcast Welcome to Night Vale, which is the intellectual property of Commonplace Books. The voice of Desert Bluffs is Ren Connolly. That's me! This episode's climate report was Falling for You, piano version by Sean Furnier. Information about Sean Furnier and the other sounds used in this podcast can be found in the description below. If you liked what you heard and you want to drop me a line, send an email to welcomebackdesertbluffs at gmail.com. <laughs>